Rejoice, everyone. We're back with another Seki Reacts to Fate. This time, we'll be having her react to... Sorry, it's been a while since we've done one of these. Uh, Dear Mood and Fionn Makumail. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I got sick. I wasn't apologizing sarcastically. <laughs> I'm genuinely might just be a little rusty at doing these. <laughs> then I'm a little tired. <laughs> it, it, it has been a while since we recorded. I got sick and then I was like, nope. All right. Well, without further ado, Dear Mood, because it's the one you have seen before. So I have Dear Mud in the campaign, and I know Dear Mud. You've seen Fate Zero, you've seen him in my campaign, you know plenty about the general aesthetic of him and some things he can do. I like Dear Mud. Dear Mud is awesome. I mean, he's... Oh god, he looks exactly like another character I know from something else. There you go. Anything else I'm missing cool down here? Do do you remember when we were reviewing a uh, fate and Deer Mud came up and Realm said that he was a lookalike of another Oh, he looks like Aizen, that's it. See, I would never he have looks remembered like that. Aizen. And I mm, Aizen's hot. Okay, um I'm going to not take your word for it and let the comments decide your fate. Look, I like Deer Mud's design. Like I said, this is one that I've seen. This is his April Fool's, I assume. And he's... I know that he has a both Lancer and a Saber class. Yes. Because yeah, I do have both, even though I've never used the Saber version. All right. So this will probably sound pretty familiar, given your your knowledge. Um, Deer Mud... Uh, Deer Mud Ua... Dubai. I know I mispronounced that. Do you want to go ahead and say it correctly for me? Hmm. I, I want to, but I'm not sure if I'd be right. You could just call him Dearmud Odina. Dearmud Odina. It's his anglicized. I, I would assume, based on the way it's spelled, I would have said Wadubd. Um, but I could be wrong there because I don't speak Gaelic. Failure. And honestly, Gaelic and Welsh do this fun thing where they take English letters and then they make them not... Okay, they take the Latin letters and then they make them not equal the sounds that the Latin letters equal. And the thing is, most languages in the world, right? Like Spanish, Italian, right? You take the Latin letters, they mean the same sounds in every language. Not in Gaelic or Welsh. They just don't. Or I could just call him his... the. The other title that's given to him, Dear Mood of the Love Spot. I mean... Should have drawn a love spot on. <laughs> um, the love spot being the magical love spot that causes any woman who gazes upon it to instantly fall in love with him. I mean... Love at first sight? I don't know. I really don't see the appeal of a love spot. I mean... But some people clearly do, because they called it a love spot. Oh, yeah, they're like... Haven't, haven't you ever seen, like, the, the people who are just like, mm, girls are so much more attractive when they have, like, a spot here or I, something I've seen, like that? I've seen media do that and people do that, but to me it's just like, it's weird. I'll never understand it. Maybe I'll be roasted alive in the comments, though. Tell me if you, you like a good love spot. All right. So... This love spot, though, ultimately was Deermood's undoing. Um, Uh-oh. What? I clicked into some sort of option on Google Chrome, and I had to click out of it. Oh, boy. So when the recording is completely lost, I apologize. I'm just gonna... I need that. You can have it back later. <laughs> well, this ended up being a detriment to Deer Mood when it accidentally attracted his boss's bride-to-be. Look, look. His boss's bride-to-be already didn't want to be with his boss. He was like grandfather age and she was like young and nubile. I mean, that's wonderful, but explain that to his boss. That's fair. So his boss, Fionn uh, Makakumail, um... 
was ultimately upset when his bride to be placed a gios on Deermood. Yeah. And forced him to run away with her. Forced, I'm sure. Hmm. Forced. Uh, the. Also, I, I would like to make the comment, right, that you actually pronounce his name Finn McCool. Cool. Yeah. That's easier to pronounce. Um, well, eventually, they caught up to them. But Finn McCool, tired of the chase, let Deermood have his bride. Okay, yeah, yeah, ish, ish. And then later on in a hunt, he wasn't going to kill him, but that didn't mean he didn't have to uh, let him die. Well, okay, the, the reason he dies in the hunt is because he was already under a curse from another person. I mean, I don't know if fate covers that. But he was actually cursed to die by uh, to die by being killed by a boar. Yeah, no, it did mention that there was that the boar killed him. That the boar was, I want to say, it was the reincarnation of either his or Finn's uh, half brother. I want to say it was his. It's his half brother, yeah. Now, Finn could have healed him with water from his hands. Well, yes, but but he kept spilling on accident. Luck. Luck. You know what? <laughs> I'm sorry I peaked the mic with my laughter. I, I can't even begrudge Finn that. You know? That feels like well-deserved revenge. Well, we'll find out later the Knights of Fiona didn't all agree with that. Um, but that spelled the end of Deer Mode. What a way to go out. I mean, he has a really cool story, right? So he's a, he is a demigod, right? He's the child of Dawn and one of the Fianna. Uh, Dawn is probably the Tuatha de Danan, one of the gods of the dead, probably associated with the Dagda, but he lives in the land of darkness. So he's, like, actually a demigod. And his, like, kind of god, uh, his kind of foster father, the god of love, Gives him morale tack and um, bail tack. Um, and then he himself has the gay buid and the gay derg. You know, a set for mortal combat and a set for playful combat, basically. Um, which is pretty fucking cool already, you know? Like, Dearmud has an amazing story of his own. Yeah, fate, unfortunately, really focuses mostly on that last part with Dearmud and Finn. Uh... I could see why. It's a very... Spicy? Yeah, it's more cinematic than I was, a, I was a demigod with two swords and two spears. Although, hey, props to Deermud being just, like, absolutely rippling with weaponry. Yeah, so speaking of his uh, weaponry in combat, <laughs> uh, Deermud wields, as a lancer, the Guy Boyd and Guy the Guy Dirk. Yeah, Derg. the yellow spear and the red spear, or the yellow spear and the green spear? Uh, Is that, I think, what they... they mean? Well, you can see them in the image here. So yellow and red, yeah. yeah. Um, ooh, shook the light there. Um, so as far as combat abilities go, he's got, we've talked about it before, the mind's eye, the that, that six sense Yeah, he's, he, and he has the natural one, not the trained one, which is the false yes. mind's eye. Oh, no. Oh, wait true so the other one was false yes yes i think you might have that wrong in the campaign i have to take a look yeah but um either way i it actually I actually might not because i remember it was a little bit like not what you would think when we made that mm. um but other than that he's also got the love spot which i have actually used in campaign once shockingly um fighting matahari and bathory yeah. Yeah, fighting. I used it against Matahari at first, and then Bathory. Trust me, I had to very much tone down what that thing did in the campaign, or else not have a campaign with Deermud. At least not for 70% of the characters. <laughs> You'd think this would be an absolutely broken ability in a franchise so dominated by women. Honestly, this is my favorite ability he has, hands down. Partially because his phantasms are a little hard to use. 
A little bit, because they're not big, giant, boomy stuff. Yeah, they're not big boom booms like Kalad Bulg or, um, or the Gay Bulg. And then the other skill he has is called Knight Strategy, which is really just a glorified way of saying waiting for your opponent to fuck up and trying to m use opportunities from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, makes sense. All the Fianna are mighty warriors, so they would have obviously been trained to deal with tactics of opposing warriors. So this is all completely makes sense to story. And then his noble phantasms, maybe this will clear up a little bit of how they're used, because I know I it's... am still so good. Like, I have actively used this character in campaign, and I still have zero grasp of how these work. Also, can you not hover over the podcast planner? <laughs> Sorry, I can't get away with that. <laughs> so the guy Bood is, um... The guy Bood, uh, let's see... The guy boot is the deadly is the deadly one, right? So, it's a normal. Um, so both spears are pretty much normal spears for the most part, except uh, when the guy boot deals uh, damage to somebody or when it hurts someone, uh, they can't heal that damage, as seen by a uh, saber and fate zero. Not unless the, so long as the spear and deer mode are intact. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. And the guy deer will cut through all magical defenses, which. He uses in Fate Zero, if you remember, to trick uh, Saber into removing her armor but before he showed her the guy, uh, the guy Bood, he used the guy Deer to cut through her armor and make her think going faster instead of more defensive was a better option. Oh. So he's a very tactical uh, fighter in that regard. Fair. So, that's... I mean, look, this actually seems really fucking accurate for Fate for once. Like, genuinely, this is kind of hitting, like, all of the high points. Well, like, maybe not, like, every single one of them, but it's hitting all the ones it's covering. I can tell you why. Why? Oh, is this that same creator who really likes Celtic and Irish mythology? Well, a lot of the creators like Celtic and Irish mythology, but oh. no, this is... The work where he was introduced was Fate Zero, which was written by Dan Rabucci, mm -hmm. who tends to, like... I don't want to say more grounded, because Madoka Magica is not a more grounded story, but... He tends to like keeping things darker and more like I, the character. He's not going for as bombastic as what a lot of FGO introduced servants are going to do. Okay, so that makes sense. All right, so let me see if I could find a saber class because normally they have a thing here, but I'm not seeing it. It's probably down. Oh, there it is. Deermood saber. Let's go through his art here because oh. Dang it, I hate when this does this. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it does this, and sometimes it doesn't. Let me click to the next one. Sometimes that changes it. There it goes. I think now it'll work. I see. It's yeah. waiting for all of them to load. Yeah. So. So it takes a second. See, I really like this version. Um, mostly because in this version, he doesn't look like quite so much of a copy of Ku. And I appreciate them both, so it's nice to see a slightly more unique design. Because in his Lancer form, he wears basically the same outfit as Ku and Skahak, just in a different color. And mm -hmm. I mean, you already mentioned that that was kind of like a Celtic servant thing. Um, yeah. we, we just didn't see it in Fergus and Meb. Yeah, it's not all Celtic servants, but definitely yeah. a certain brand of them. Yeah, and I like this, and this is the version where he has uh, Moral Tak and Bial Tak. Yes, so the funny thing about uh, Diarmuid's Saber is that normally he carries around um, only one spear and one sword, but because of some weird fate mechanic, I'm sure, he can't have uh, both. A he sword can't have and a sword a and a spear, so he has both his swords or both his spears at any given time. I could understand that, because that would be like a weird like saber lancer hybrid if you tried to do both. Yeah, well, fate doesn't always play by those rules, i.e. look at the archer class. Um, look, look, archers are different. Anything that can be fired from a bow-like mechanic can be fired from a <laughs> bow-like mechanic. You think they're all bow-like mechanics? <laughs> well, everything works on a bow-like mechanic, even guns. The, the, the idea is anything you can make a projectile weapon, you can make a projectile weapon of. Oh, you sweet summer child. Look, if I could throw you, you would be a projectile weapon, and I would thereby be an archer. All right, so... Uh, Saber Diarmuid, what separates him from normal Diarmuid... Let me see if I can get a good image of that love spot. Actually, I don't think I can. 
Uh, oh no, I can't. I don't see it on there. Let me pull up his April Fools. Maybe we'll see it there. Is it in a different place? <gasps> is this like the king from Robin Hood Men in Tights where his mole is moving from what scene do, to what scene? I, do? I don't... You full screen the fucking thing. Okay, it's back. Oh my god. Is this gonna be like... Like the, the Robin Hood where it's moving from scene to scene? I hope not. Okay, no, it's still there. It's, it's just... in the same spot. Yeah, yeah. Same spot. Okay. It just wasn't visible in that art. Okay, this version, because he's facing you straight on, looks more Chad-like than the other art. Well, this Dear Mood's Dear Mood when also, he's... Also, while you're on images, look up Aizen Sosuke. A-I-Z-E-N. I'm sorry, I've never read Bleach, right? Oh, oh, I really hope... Okay. There, there, right there. Right there. Those, the second and third image. See what I mean? He looks like Aizen. Kinda? I don't know. I feel like I've seen that design before, though. Well, I'm sure I've seen it somewhere else, but Aizen's the one that, like, came to mind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there's also a character in um, Shokugeki no Soma with the same... <gasps> there is! There's a character in Shokugeki no Soma. He's one of the uh, antagonists. Looks exactly the same. Hmm. So, let me see here. Did I want to cover that yet? Nah, I'll cover that later. So, this deer mood has a lot more control over his love spot. This is implied to be a deer mood slightly later on in his life when he's... Not just making every woman he walks by horny. So, yeah, I was going to say, because I think it's love spot C with Lancer and love spot B with Saber, right? And that's a matter of more control of it, not not uh, getting more powerful. Okay, okay. Um, and then, yeah, you correctly identified the swords. you want to pronounce those again for me? I think it's Moraltak and Bialtak. Yeah. Uh, but I also know that um, in the mythology, it might not be Moraltak. It might be Noraltak. Um, the letters are very similar, so it hmm. could have been changed. So in different translation. translations might come up with different results. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and those swords, in particular, were given to him by his foster father, the god hmm. um, of love, A Agnes or something, was his name. All right. Also, I just saw something about Danan. Now I'm curious. Wait, stop. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's some stuff here that I can go over a little bit well, later. Well, there, there's a part where he says he could smell the Danan on them, but um, Danan is the, is the name of the Irish gods. It's the Tuatha de Danan. Hmm. So that's that's actually kind of interesting. Wait, he can ride? Shit. A lot of servants have riding. Oh, yeah, that's That's right. just something that tends to come with specific classes. Yeah, I forgot about that. A um, lot of my characters have that. His big, uh, like, the big difference in his combat is he has an ability called Mono Burst Jump. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a mobility in, uh, it's a powerful boost to his mobility um, and yeah he can jump nice white guy can jump <laughs> white men can jump yeah um, and then I believe what is it oh yeah strong mental defenses that's it <laughs> that's fair well but him being older would precipitate that yeah 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 all right, just a few last notes on Deer Mode before we move to Finn. Mo uh, well, you still have to show me NPs. Oh, yes. Because I've never NPs. seen the NP animations. And uh, people get really mad at you when you don't show me NP um, animations. That seems to be, like, the number one thing people get mad at you for. Also, if there's any card art with, like, extra phrases and shit. Well, for the extra phrases, unfortunately, I don't feel like combing through all of those. So feel free to point them out in the comments. Seki reads all of them. I read every comment and hold it deep in my heart, unless it's insulting, in which, in which case you can go to hell. I'll still like the comment, though, so long as it's not derogatory. <laughs> <laughs> but as for NPs, I guess just I'll say it now. Um, I try to stick to the FGO NPs, and I'm trying to get better about remembering uh, to do all of them. But as far as thing, and then I'll do FGO Arcade as well until we get copyright struck for that or something. Um... But as far as things from the anime go, or as far as things from um, any other material go, he I might not get them around it. to him. Yeah, either sp for spoiler or for just footage is a lot trickier copyright-wise. If Thin I can, game animation. 
I'll click into the NPs here. I can click into the NPs if you want into the descriptions of them. See if we they have gifts of forms of the anime yeah. versions, but that's about the best I can do, I think. Yeah, we can try that. Um, but just some last notes bef on Dearmood before we do go over the NPs, and I'll go back to Lancer and see if we can see the NPs in anime form as well from GIF. Uh, but Sayer Dearmood was um, has actually appeared. He supposedly appeared in a Holy Grail War in London sometime during the events of Fate Grand Order in an alternate timeline. Oh. Though its details are fairly unclear, all that we know is that after demanifesting um, from his, with his duel, or yeah, all we know is that even after demanifesting, his his duel with Miyamoto Musashi reta was retained in his memory. Hmm, interesting. Which, um, you said that the, the America chapter of FGO is where all the, the Celtic servants are? That was my next little, uh... I had to look up the banners no. a while back for another video, so, so... the America chapter was originally supposed to have Sa Saber Deermood in it. Okay. He even appears in the chapter's animated trailer. Okay. But, likely due to time constraints... He was cut and replaced by his Lancer variant, as anyone who's actually played the chapter in game will know. Why? Just because the Lancer version was around much earlier than he was in game, and they just ran out of time. He was in the files for years before they finally managed to find a spot to get him in game. Oh, so where did Saber enter the game? Um, so he entered the game in the same spot I believe Lancer entered the game, except later on. So Lancer entered the game during the Fate Zero tie-in uh, story. Mm -hmm. Um... I want to say, I could be wrong on that. I wasn't around in year one. Um, but Saber Deermood was introduced in a rerun of that event. It was actually kind of interesting. Oh. When he first came out, there was no story in FGO with him uh, to see his character in play. We've got some since, but he's a bit of an odd character as far as fate servants go. Interesting. Um, let's see. So, yeah, let's go ahead and... Well, let me make sure I don't have any last uh, notes... I mean, I, I really like Dearmut. I like his April Fools for both of them. I like both of his character designs. I like that so far from what I've seen, right? Like, they've stuck kind of to the whole, like, between Ku and Skahak and, and Dearmut, obviously, they've stuck to a similar design choice with outfit. Uh, makes me wonder if Fion will share that. Right. Will share that particular outfit decision, you know? There's one well, there's the Saber. For... Lancer. Let me look. Well, I want to do Lancer. I want to see both. Yeah, I guess we could do Saber first. Lancer's a little yeah. older. I haven't seen either of them. Any chapters? No. No, just just hover over your... You don't have to play it while it's... Okay. I'll give him something to do. I'll do them. That's cute. See, okay. Seishu Wakas Kyokai-sen. Bouncy boy. Oh, I don't think I said what those swords actually did. Um, no, you did not. Because because I knew the names and then we just kind of glossed over. The B sword, the Balgarach, whatever it's called. Big Altach? Yes, that one. Increases Deermood's defenses and combat abilities while it's being used. Uh, like directly being used and the uh, moral, moral talk. talk. Yeah, that one is helps Deermood with his jumping ability. Um, He's a very springy boy. Which as a saber. Yeah, you saw him like pop, yep, pop, pop in that one. Springy boy. Now let's see if I can't find the Lancer NP. Otherwise, he, we're going to be seeing gift form. But... This white boy can jump. Oh, look at that. And he's shirtless too. <laughs> Best of all worlds. I'm gonna assume oh, towards the end. <laughs> I mean, it's always towards the end. This one's not going to be nearly as impressive animation-wise. Yeah. It's still cool. Yeah. I mean, it, okay, I will admit, though, it does kind of look like they took the, uh... They, they took the, like, the coding in the base animation for Guy Bulk. Just reapplied it. Because they look very similar. Deer Mood's a much easier to get servant in game, and he hasn't received nearly as much attention in game. Yeah. At least not this form of him. Saber's been receiving a lot of attention lately, but not Lancer. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like the the three, uh, the Guy Bull, Guy Durg, and Guy Boot all look pretty much identical with the exception of color. And I'm just going to close out of that before um, I horrify you some more. Um, what? Nothing. Okay. 
And all right, let's see if I can find the uh, see if they have the animations for them. Like, or I guess they're not gonna have oh, it here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's the oh, concept. Oh, nice. Let's see. You want to see if the other one has any good concept? Yeah. Right? They might be the same image. Yeah. Still, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go back to Lancer Deer mode real quickly. Just see if we can see some of the anime. Even though I, even though you've seen the anime before. Yes, I have seen this anime. I remember very little of it, but I have seen it. Ugh. You hurt me. Nick Knack takes personal offense, apparently, to the fact that I just do not remember much of Zero. If it helps, I don't remember Stay Night either. Oh, uh, that's it. Does he have an... Uh, he's an FGO Arcade, I guess. Apparently. You can see that in the corner, right? Yeah, a Tale of Tragic Love, Devotion to Grind. That must have been, uh... At least I think that's FGO Arcade. I don't think he was in, uh, um, Extella. Um... Yeah, no, I was I right. That, that that's, like, the exact same spear as Gay Bulk. Pretty much. Yeah, kinda. They use a very similar design. Yeah. I don't mind, I'm just saying. And I don't think it's going to be... Okay, I can see it here. Yeah. Oh, wait. Was he in Unlimited Codes? Oh, that's... Okay, yes. He wasn't in Arcade. He's in Unlimited Codes, the fighting game. Oh, is that a game I can get? No, I'm pretty sure it's Japan only. Fuck. And if it's not Japan only, it's just really old and hard to find. Man, you see, here's the thing. I need to learn Japanese and move to Japan and <laughs> so I can play all of these games. Actually... You know what? Let me not give misinformation to our audience before we get roasted alive. I have heard people say they've played that before. And I have seen it. Do, 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 do. Not, go, not doing the uh, copyright thing, because it's going to get us... Oh, the Jeopardy? Yeah. Do, do. Oh, it is available in the West. Hey, wait. On PC? the PSP. <sighs> Can't you get, like, a sim of that shit? Yeah, you could download a PSP emulator. I don't know how well they work. I'm not big into yeah. the emulation community, but... But I don't have a PSP. What is a PSP? So... Okay, this is not the video for that. Yeah. I'm sorry. We'll talk about that if later. If you want to try it out, ask uh, ask Realm, I almost said his name, to borrow his PS Vita, and it might be on the Vita store. Oh, okay. Because that's still around, apparently. Um. All right, so now for Finn... Uh, okay, what Finn is... McCool? Finn McCool. Finn McCool. Spell Fion Makumail. <laughs> SMT. I don't FPO. know what... <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei. It's actually the parent series oh. of, uh, of uh, Persona. Mm, no, I know that. I just... Meet Finn, uh, Finn McCool. Okay, well, I have a new, I have a new uh, waifu. Um, I, I have to inform you. I have a new waifu. Have you met him? So, he actually has a different design in Fate Zero because they hadn't yet made him a servant yet. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's Grain. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, there's him a little bit. I mean, to be honest, this is actually more how I would have pictured him, but uh, I will happily stick with his servant form. And then they made a servant form. I think the implication is that he's supposed to be younger, but I don't know. Oh my god. Well, I mean, okay, to be fair, the main parts of Fion's story are from when he was young. You know? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's actually going to be something that comes up a little later, too. Yeah. God, I have a new waifu now. And this is probably him and Deerwood together. Fuck. Also, that's a different Deerwood design and a different... I am sorry, Ku. I'm betraying you. I love this so... Oh, my God. He looks like... Um, he looks like... He kind of looks like um, Thranduil. Like an anime version of like Thranduil or Legolas. I'm sorry, I'm betray. He looks exactly like someone from another show though, and I can't. I guess all anime characters look the same after you've seen enough anime. Are you thinking of a very blonde version of Alucard, maybe? No, no, go back to one of his, uh... Uh, give me the one with armor. Oh, I feel like I've seen that exact character somewhere before. He's very hot, though. 10 out of 10. Maybe new favorite waifu. So, Finn McCool, despite his ambiguous, direct or indirect killing of Deermood... Understandable. ...was a great warrior and led the Knights of Fianna. He had yeah. many women troubles, though. Yes, and he had, I think, three wives before 
um, Grine was supposed to marry him, and Grine was told that she was going to be marrying his grandson, uh, Oisin? Osan? Something like that? Um, and then she saw who she was supposed to be marrying, and she was like, hell no! And unlike Dyrmud, we have a lot more on him prior to, uh, um, the, the, uh, possible murder, possible manslaughter of Dyrmud. Okay, but to be fair, the main part of Fionn's story is from when he's younger. It's, it's... Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not surprised by that. I mean, all, his involvement in Dyrmud is basically a footnote on the rest of his mythology. To be, to be fair. Speaking of his mythology, let's go ahead and run I, uh, through a... Uh, I fucking... I have, to, I have to confess to the viewers, right? We were talking about this before we started recording. I once wrote a horrendous sixth grade uh, fan fiction about Finn McCool for class to turn in. And it is actually laminated and somewhere in, in my closet. Speaking of um, his younger years, I guess, let's go ahead and... Uh, Go through a highlight reel of some of his troubles with women. Oh, of the Fenian cycle? So, amongst the first troubles with women he had was when he got cursed by a pair of sisters. Yes. Then a fairy stole seven years of his life. Yes. Due to issues involving his first wife. Yes. And then, of course, there's the prior mentioned cucking that took place. And, yeah. After that... Mr. Love Spot was, um... I, I'm surprised Fate starts so late in his life, actually. There's actually a lot more, but I didn't oh, think okay. we'd have time to cover that. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Um, after Mr. Love Spot was dead, in the night, the Knights of Fiona ended up going to war with themselves, and uh, Finn lost his life in the process. Mm -hmm. One could say he was cucked to death. I mean, not gonna lie, my favorite part of his story will always be the Salmon of Knowledge. Oh. Oh, we're getting there. That that has always been my favorite part of the story, because, like, this dude is trying so hard, like, seven years to catch this fucking fish, right? And then, and then fucking... So... And then this boy was cooking it, and when he was cooking it... They got fucking, it burned his thumb and he put his thumb in his mouth and then he got all the knowledge of the poor poet. I actually kind of felt bad for the poet. He spent seven years trying to get this fucking salmon of knowledge. And Fionn burns himself cooking. Do you know how many times I have burned myself cooking? Where's my salmon of knowledge moment? Finn has got, he's a great warrior befitting of how, of as many, uh, years of not getting cucked to death. Mm -hmm. um, he has a level of clairvoyance and he trained, he actually trained deer mode in Magecraft. Nice. Um, Fun fact, we were talking uh, last two episodes about how uh, stories can get transferred from one mythology to another, mm -hmm. but uh, this has been likened by a lot of people Lancelot to- Lancelot and Guinevere? No, actually, really? so there's a Welsh story about Gwion Bach tasting the cauldron of knowledge. And oh, you mean the salmon. The no, 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 well, yeah, the salmon of knowledge part specifically. But yeah, there's actually a story where this boy is fleeing from this. So this boy is the, the servant of this sorceress. And he's cooking up like the potion of knowledge in her cauldron for her to feed to her son, who's an idiot. However, the same thing happens. He gets a little on his finger, licks it off. And then she decides to chase him for the rest of his life and try to kill him. And there's this whole story about how... He, he transforms into a into a mouse, and she transforms into a cat, so he transforms into a flea, and she transforms into, like, something that eats fleas, and so on and so forth. Like, it's an entire story. Also, a lot of... This is very similar to uh, Sigurd and Fafnir. Drinking the blood of Fafnir and then gaining the knowledge to talk to... You know, unintentionally, of course, drinking the blood of the dragon, and then gaining the ability to talk to animals. I'm just saying, this is one particular story where I actually... When I was a kid, I, I used to mix up Fionn and Guion stories a lot. I don't know quite how to transition out of that. I'm sorry. I like Fionn. I know a lot about... I arguably know more about Fionn than I know about Ku. It sounds like it. <laughs> Look, sixth grade me was absolutely obsessed. 
I'm just going to jump into our next se session, he or session, section here. I'm stumbling over my words today. <laughs> um, he's actually got three different noble phantasms. Okay. Um, he has one called Mock on Lewin. I'll list them here. Um, which is his spear. It's capable of making auto attacks, like some kind of video game, and provides him mental protections. Mm -hmm. It's also capable of shooting streams of water. Uh, the name actually belongs to one of Finn's swords, but was fused with, but the, but the legends were fused into one for fate. Okay, makes sense. Then you there's the, the Fintan Finnegus. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm still mispronouncing these. This is the one you love. The salmon of knowledge. Yeah, except now he gains incredible knowledge, like stupid knowledge. But he has to lick his thumb. He has to lick his thumb. It's the same as it is in the mythology. And then there's the Uiske Biatha. I'm going to say that's probably Uiske Baith. Yes, which, because of the Salmon of Knowledge being on his thumb, whenever he cups water in his hands, it has healing properties for both wounds and poison. Nice. So uh, so he, he's actually pretty history as far as fate goes, as far as appearances, long before his actual introduction in FGO. Earlier I showed you some of the flashbacks of him from Fate that were in Fate Zero. He's also basically the Irish version of King Arthur. I just want to put that out there. He's got the whole um, sleep in a cave surrounded by the Fianna, and one day he will awake and defend Ireland in the hour of her greatest need. Well, I skipped over it earlier, but the, even the wiki here mentions that uh, the Deermud uh, Finn oh. thing is the Lancelot pursuit. and Guinevere. Yeah, the pursuit of Deermud and Grain is the yeah. same as, you know, Arthur having to, to deal with Lancelot and Guinevere after their affair. No, that's very similar Honestly, I've always kind of so so this is this is called this is Fionn's story is part of the Fenian cycle or the Fionacht, um, which is like the Ulster cycle, one of the other major epics in Irish folklore and mythology. Even uh, prior to his FGO appearance, he did have a lot of footnotes in Fate Stay Night and Fate Zero, mm -hmm. and uh, Fate Apocrypha actually. So. He's actually been technically animated in an anime. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that other version. Besides you me? that other, like this oh. version of him. Oh. Because Fate Apocrypha, in its anime adaptation, well, the basis of Fate Apocrypha is from the Grill War that takes place before the Fate Zero Grill War. Yeah. Finn is known to have participated, and in the timeline that leads to the anime Fate Apocrypha, or the light novel Fate Apocrypha, um,. He actually comes out winning, mostly, in no small part, to his master using help of the Nazis. Mm -hmm. um, but he at least participated in all versions of that war, though. So Yeah. Also, I'm not surprised that the Makan Luin is a spear. I mean, you said something about a sword, but I think you might be wrong there. In the mythology, it is actually based on a sp spear. Uh, let me see if I can click into this. Well, because he was given the the, the, the spear, the burga, from the son of uh, Kong to ward against the music of Ailelen. The name originated from Finn's sword, but is, it is often seen the same as his god uh, spear. Oh, that's big himbo move. Name your spear and your sword. This That's like Geralt naming every horse roach. Okay. I was like, because I know that he, he slew the, the fire breather of the Tuatha de Danan with, partially with a spear. So, the last sort of thing I wanted to touch on here was what happens when you get the two of the servants together, Diarmuid and Finn? Do they hate each other? Do they fight? Oh yeah, here's his anime appearance, uh, Finn's. In this photo, if I can... No, I'm not going to pull it. He's back there, can you see him? The little shadow there? No, not really. <laughs> Is that intentional? Are you clowning on me? Kind of, but no, that's actually something that happens. He's kind of, he's not he's just sort of a cameo. Ridiculous. Fergus had a cameo in an anime once. Um but yeah. When this particular version in uh Deer Mood get together, um They're friends, right? So obviously things didn't end amicably. Well, yeah, but that's when he's older. He's younger, presumably, here. But in Fate, servants are summoned um, in their prime, so he's obviously summoned younger. Yeah. And Deermud is summoned later in life, unfortunately, oh. for Deermud. But they have all the memories of what happened oh. no matter what point in their life. So, 
Finn doesn't really feel guilty or bitter at all because this didn't really happen to him yet. It's just something he knows happened. So he'll even make light of it and joke about it. Oh, that's hilarious. Meanwhile, Dearmud... Well, and he'll treat Dearmud like an old friend. Uh-huh. Dearmud will accept that, but in reality, he feels fucking awkward about it. Especially, yeah. I mean, look, I can understand that. I'd feel awkward about that, too. Like... I don't know. OTP right there. Wait, is there fan fiction about this? I think that's a good spot to end it. We'll see you next time with whatever we do. NPs. Ugh. (laughs) Gives me time to look up the the fan fiction. Only animations for one of them. Hey, look up. Okay, that looks amazing. This is because this is a pretty recent animation update for him. That looks amazing. That's so fucking cool. All right, well, we'll see you next time with whatever we do. I will save you guys the uh, Seki fan fiction hunt. No, no, like, we have to like, know. Like, comment, and subscribe. We have to know. There Bye. it is. There it is.